Hi everyone, I'm Jill Reagan, owner of Whispering Willow Farm, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys all about these fun little things called soil blockers. So we have got several soil blockers on our farm. It is one of our frequently asked questions, what is a soil blocker, how do you use a soil blocker, and then some troubleshooting, a lot of issues people have um, that might deter them from using a soil blocker. So we're gonna dive into all the nitty gritty today. So first up, I'm just gonna share with you some of our most frequently used soil blockers. This is the handheld mini 20 and there are 20 of these little guys in here. Then we have the handheld four. Uh, we do have a single which is being loaned out right now and then we have some of these stand-up ones. We have a stand-up 12 and a stand-up 35 and so we use all of these for various different things but a lot of what we're starting things in are these little mini 20s and we'll up pot the 20s into a four, which I'll show you guys what this looks like. Um, so one, I just wanna share with you how you make a soil block. So let's get down here with my soil um, and I'll show you what's going on. All right, so first up, I think that a few prominent problems, if you have tried soil blocking in the past and have not had success, more than likely it's a soil issue and a water issue. So I wanna talk about that first. Here in this is black tote, I've got some quality soil you guys can see here this is really good stuff it is a mixture of peat moss perlite limestone um, and i just mix it all together in a tote which i like this tote um, we buy these from the hardware store you can also buy like concrete totes uh, which is really nice reason i like doing this tote is because it has a hard surface and so when you're packing in the soil into your soil blockers it's nice to have that hard surface to pack it in so one, you wanna make sure that you've got quality soil. That's your number one. If you notice that your soil has large clumps or chunks of bark, I would recommend hand picking that out or sifting it. We have these compost sifters, uh, which is really nice because when it comes to soil blocks, uh, specifically these small little tiny ones, you don't really want anything to disturb that root. And so just think of a real light, fluffy seed sturdy mix. Um, so once you've got your good quality soil medium, now you're gonna add water. And this is where the problem happens, you guys. I get asked all the time, why did my soil block fall apart? Why uh, did it dry out too quickly? Most of the time it's too dry uh, when you make it. And so when you're wanting to mix your water and your soil together, you're gonna think of like a soupy consistency. If it's not soupy, it is gonna fall apart. That soil is gonna crack. It's not gonna hold its structure. And so for me, I just always tell my Myself, go for soupy so I'm gonna start adding water you're gonna want to just get your hands dirty and mix it and I'll share with you guys the consistency that works best for me I take my water and just pour in a little at a time what I like to do is work with one half of the tote and get it really wet and then if I need more soil I can pull from the second half so once you kind of have your puddle here Start mixing it around. All right, I'm gonna try to show you guys here. You can see we've got water coming out. So I'll just keep pouring water in the middle and then bringing soil from the side as I need it. But even this is a little too dry. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Remember, we're thinking soupy. So this is getting that nice soupy consistency. And then this right here, and then this right here is probably about perfect. You guys can see here, I've got that plastic on the bottom I was telling you about, which makes it really easy. All right, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna grab the side of your soil block like this. You're gonna scoop in some soil. You can see I'm just taking this and moving it in a circular motion. On the back, on the bottom of this tote here, I keep adding soil, rotating it. And so now you guys can see here, this is really 
packed in. It's not going anywhere. So now we're going to move this up to our tray and I'm going to show you what to do from here. All right, so there's a few ways to go about this as far as what you are going to put your soil blocker on. However, I have found depending on what I use determines the integrity and the structure of the soil block um, until I can move it outside. So you can take it and just put it on a shallow tray that has no holes on it. However, when you're bottom watering, there's no barrier. And so I find that the soil blocks do begin to uh, fall apart a bit, which is one of the number one questions I get asked. And so what I like to do is buy these deep 1020 mesh trays from Bootstrap Farmer. I will put the link down below. And then I like to have a deep 1020 tray that has no holes. And what I do is I'll put the mesh tray inside the 1020 tray and then I'll actually start to lay my soil blocks in here. I'll show you why I like this system when we go inside and we start to water. The soil block continues to hold its integrity because what I'm actually doing is I'm lifting up this mesh tray, I'm bottom watering and it is seeping in through um, these little mesh holes which is what it was designed for and I've had no problem at all. So. Once you have packed your soil into your soil blocker, I'm going to zoom in and show you guys what this looks like. All right, so usually you're going to have a lot of excess water, right? We talked about making that mixture really soupy. And so what I like to do is go in and just push. And when I push like that, I'm releasing some of that liquid to the top. But the idea is you're going to lift with your bottom fingers, right? So this is just holding it steady, but you're going to put your fingers underneath here and you're just going to lift up. And then when you lift up, you have created these beautiful little blocks. All right, now I'm going to show you with the four because I also packed it up. Same thing. You're lifting your fingers up. That's just an easy way um, I know to teach people. You can see here the water starting to come to the top. So as you lift those fingers up, you have your soil blocks. All right, so you can see here that these have these nice little square holes. That is because on your soil blocks, it's gonna come with a kit. And you are going to be able to pick the size that you want on here. And so I have mine as the size of my mini blocks because I know that once I've created my mini blocks, it's gonna move into here. But you can totally just change this as you need to, but it does create this perfect size that way when I have my little soil block baby over here that is ready to be potted up it just fits in here I don't cover it up I don't do anything else I literally just take this pop it down in here and then that's it I'm not covering it with soil I'm not doing any of that I'm just popping it right in and then you guys can see here, we will continue this process if you keep up potting it. If you have that single, you'll take this whole big thing, pot it up into a single, and so on and so forth. So that is how you make a soil block. It is really, really easy. If for some reason it starts cracking and falling apart like this, then you know you just need more moisture in your soil. Um, but overall, it's pretty easy. So now let's go inside. I'm going to show you how I water these, really what their roots look like, and why it is a really good option. All right, so here I have some of those mini 20s. One, one of the questions I get asked often is how do you cover up the soil? Uh, you can see I have very little soil on top, and I just kind of dust it and move it out. But some of them you know, down here, depending on what you're growing, they don't actually need soil on top. Uh, so my Salanova here, I didn't put soil, any of my flowers, this is Jaro, I didn't put any soil on top. So here we have one of ours I'll grab back here. All right, so I grabbed one of my Salanovas that I planted just about a week or so ago. You guys can see the root system on this. It's so great, right? It's coming out the sides. It's not becoming root bound. It's not spiraling or anything like that. So at this point, I could take this one and up pot into that four. Um, or I could put this under cultivation, um, like under a protected cover in my high tunnel and just, you know, be real intentional with watering it for a few days. What I'm actually gonna do with 
with these because I want the roots to be a bit more established before I transplant them out. I'm actually gonna up pot these. So all I would do, like I mentioned, we just showed you making those fours. I'd take this, pop it right in that little single cell, and that's it, move it um, back out in the greenhouse and it's good to go. But here comes our biggest question, is that is watering. When I water, if you had a flat surface that you were putting these um, you know, soil block trays on, yeah, when you water it, it is going to just essentially wash away all this soil, which is why I recommend putting it in some sort of mesh tray first. Because what I do, and you guys can see here, I've got water, I watered these this morning. And when I do, it just seeps up through the bottom, gets the bottom really wet, but it still keeps the integrity and the structure of the soil block itself. And so if you notice that you are having issues with your soil block uh, just starting to disintegrate, I would try to find a different option to where there's a bit more of a barrier. And I'm only watering these about every few days. And so you can tell that it's working out really well. The structure, this I just started this week, versus I'll show you these down here that I have started a couple weeks ago. So all of these down here, I started several weeks ago. You can tell, you know, the soil block itself is still intact. I have no issues uh, with the soil block. They've got nice roots on them. I'll be up potting those today. This, I had no uh, soil covered on top. And so bottom watering from the bottom of the tray, letting it seep up through the holes, is definitely gonna make sure that the structure of your soil block stays intact. All right, so I definitely recommend bottom watering. That is going to keep the integrity and the structure of um, your soil block. It is really, really important. Another question I get asked that I wanna identify and speak to here on this video is when do I know when to up pot? Why would I start in the mini 20 and then transplant up? Why couldn't I just start in the four? And I am doing a lot of different methods, mainly just to teach you guys and show you some comparison. And so for the tomatoes that I've started on my farm, I didn't wanna have to start in the mini 20 and up pot, so I just started them in the four. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and that was just because of my time restraints. I didn't wanna have to up pot them, but some of the benefits of small, starting in that small soil block and up potting is that you're always up potting them into fresh new nutrients. When you think about starting a tomato in, let's say, a four inch pot, and you've started that tomato 12 weeks before it plans to go outside, in that 12 weeks, it has consumed and used up all the nutrients in that soil. More than likely, it's gonna start showing signs of deficiency. You're gonna have to address that before it ever goes out into the field. So for me, that is a huge benefit of soil blocking is that I'm you know, going from the smallest one and up potting, um, having that availability of nutrients available for my plants. I do have healthier plant starts because of it. We don't deal with any sort of root bound. Um, it just, it really makes a nice transplant. And so you do have to kind of evaluate your budget, what's gonna work best for you. All right, so first up, let's talk about the tomatoes for my farm. I just made those single fours. I planted them, which I, looks like we have some already popping up back here. And I just loosely covered it with soil. Um, and that was, like I said, just a time thing. And so you are gonna have to figure out what's gonna work best for you in that regards. And then when to pot up. So here we've got our lettuce mixes, which I just showed you guys. All right, so when my tomatoes get their first set of true leaves, that's when I would up pot them for the lettuce. I'm starting to see the roots come out the side. I would probably go ahead and up pot this now. And so that's really a good sign is just looking at your plants you can already tell when they're gonna become you know, deficient. And so these still look pretty healthy. And so before they become deficient, I wanna go ahead and up pot them into fresh soil. But we've got these little yarrows back here. I would probably wait about another week or so. They're not quite big enough in my opinion to up pot. All right, so I showed you how to make soil blocks. I expressed why you would wanna you know, create soil blocks. They're gonna have better root systems. They're gonna be sturdier plants. You're gonna always be up potting them into fresh new nutrients. However, it is one way of doing things. I just showed you guys on a grow rack in my house. I have several different methods here because 
what might work for one person isn't gonna work for another. If you do not have the time capacity to up pot these um, soil blocks, one, maybe start in a larger soil block, or maybe look at one of these air pruning trays that are gonna have very similar effects to a soil block, but not as time demanding when it comes to up potting. Um, and so I do encourage you kind of play around, but a lot of people, uh, myself being one of them, kind of deterred from soil blocks in the beginning because it seemed overly complicated it seemed like a step that didn't really make sense to me. So I just wanted to do this video to kind of clear the air on that. You need a good soil medium. You need to make sure that you have um, enough water. You're creating a soupy uh, consistency. And then making the blocks themselves are pretty easy. And as long as you have a good setup, you know, your soil blocks deteriorating isn't really an issue for me because I have the right trays for soil blocks. And so if it is a method that you're wanting to use on your farm and your garden, just make sure you have all the supplies to where you're really kind of setting yourself up in the beginning to have a successful season. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna be really uh, diligent on getting to these and just really trying to troubleshoot any issues you might have when it comes to seed starting or soil blocking. But thank you all for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.